In this Killick Explains finance video, is there a magic formula for stock market success? Sounds tempting. Is there such a thing? Well, value investors set out with a simple enough aim. In theory, they want good quality stocks that are cheap. And I've added one coming off the ropes. So you want good quality stocks at a decent price with the potential to grow. Because remember that cheap stocks can have a habit of getting cheaper. That's not necessarily what we want. Now that, in theory, sounds simple enough. And it is as an idea, good quality cheap stocks. But it's the execution that's more difficult. A bit like preparing for a marathon. The idea sounds simple enough down the pub. It's actually doing it that's the hard part. And Warren Buffett, no less, US investor, chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, recognised that. He once said, investing is simple, but it isn't easy. Now, therefore, if someone offers you a way to screen stocks, kind of guaranteed to pick good growth potential stocks, you might be tempted to jump straight in. And that's exactly what a chap called Joel Greenbratt, hedge fund manager, did in a book that's actually well, well worth reading. It's simple, it's concise, a little book that beats the market. First published in 2005 and updated, uh, the subsequent title was not surprisingly a little book that still beats the market. And he claimed some pretty spectacular returns from 1988 to 2004, just before the book was published, returns that were over double the S&P 500. So that sounds like a formula that's worth going for. And it is indeed very, very simple on the surface. But the question is, could you rely on it? Could you really distill investing to just effectively two numbers? Now, do recommend that you read the book. It's a great analysis of some of the value investing principles. But I'm going to conclude that relying on one magic formula may not, in fact, be the obvious solution that it first appears. OK, what are the two numbers? Basically, Greenblatt said there are two key numbers, and this is based on some principles that go right back to Ben Graham, the father of value investing. One is the earnings yield. So what you want to be looking for is stocks on an earnings yield basis, screening on an earnings yield basis. So that is earnings before interest and tax, profit essentially defined his way over the value of the business, enterprise value. And he said you're looking for stocks, as you'll see in a moment, with a high earnings yield. It's the inverse, effectively, of the PE ratio, and it's basically a way of screening stocks that are generating value. And the logic is supposed to be that if earnings before interest and tax is, say, 10 million, enterprise value, that's the value of the business, if you like, is 100 million, then the earnings yield that will come out of that would be 10% the higher the better. Why? Because essentially the higher that number, if you like, the cheaper you are able to pick up that rate of earnings. Second number, return on capital, defined by Greenblatt as EBIT again, earnings before interest and tax, that's profit before interest and tax, people who prefer that expression, over net fixed assets, his definition of balance sheet worth, plus networking capital, so the value of the business. And again, he said the key is to find businesses with high return on capital. So to go back to the basic principles, you are looking for businesses that are cheap, but growing, but generating returns on capital. And if you can find them, there you go, bingo. So in essence, what he suggested was if you could screen stocks for those two numbers, here be where you want to be heading for. Do you want the stocks? that are low return on capital, low earnings yield. No, that's the exact reverse of what we're looking for. That suggests they're not going anywhere, return on capital, and what's more, you're paying quite a bit of money for them. So that's definitely where we don't want to be. A better bet, but not perfect, is where you've at least got a decent earnings yield, so they're cheap, all right, but no return on capital worth speaking about, so they're not really going anywhere. Well, that's better than expensive and not going anywhere, but it's still not good enough. Third quadrant, if you like, is high return on capital, but they're expensive. Low earnings yield, because remember the earnings yield is the inverse effectively of, you could say, the PE ratio, a version of the PE ratio. So down there, yeah, okay, you've got a stock that's coming off the ropes, but it's expensive. So for Greenblatt, the key was to find stocks in that quadrant there. High earnings yield, so they're good value, and they're also growing. Good stocks at cheap prices. Sounds fantastic. Now, he claimed, that he beat the market consistently over a certain period using this method, but it does have its drawbacks. And let's look at some of the key ones. First of all, you've got to be the kind of person that's prepared to buy 
out of favour unpopular stocks. The whole process is built on buying a portfolio of stuff that other people have overlooked. And that's not something that people can necessarily do and stick with as a strategy. The strategy can fail for several consecutive years, so you've got to be able to hold, hang on in there, not panic sell, not dump stocks. Greenback excluded deliberately financials and utilities. So for income investors, this isn't looking too clever necessarily because they might be two sectors that you would rely on potentially for dividend yields. So certain investors will look at this a little bit nervously. And he recommended annual rebalancing. And that means you've got to be, you've got to be prepared to cut winners potentially, not kind of hang on in there. And so there are quite a few reasons why he reckons that his method doesn't always work for all investors. However, the truth is, as Groucho Marx said, there's more to it than that. I would refuse to join any club that would have me as a member. In reality, once a strategy is published in a book that then becomes a bestseller, usually it's because it's run out of steam in its current format. Call me a cynic, but often strategies are published to everybody in the market when they stop working. And there is some evidence, if you look at the studies done, that that's the case with this strategy. All right, It doesn't seem to offer some of the returns subsequent to 2005 that offered before 2005, and there are plenty of papers out there that I won't go into that try and explain why. So, conclusions. Am I suggesting this is a waste of time? No, I'm not. The book is really well worth a read for sure, but as a formula, as a shortcut, it is a little bit too good to be true. You can distill investing down to just two numbers. That said, it's a great framework for thinking about value investing. Cheap, good stocks, coming off the ropes. I like it as a mental framework. I'm not convinced as a stock screen, it's just gonna solve all your woes in one go. Any questions, editor at killick.com.